All right, so Fedora 37 is out and available right now. It came out this week, and as usual, I'm going to give it a full review in today's video. And lately, it seems like you guys are extra excited about Fedora, and I can't blame you. Fedora has come a long way. I used to think of this distribution as an average distribution at best, but nowadays, Fedora is awesome. And one of the things that I love most about Fedora is that it's somewhat of a unicorn among Linux distributions. Fedora gives you the latest in Linux technologies while also being completely rock solid. In fact, it's often the case that Fedora is among the first, if not the first, to implement just about every new and exciting technology that comes around in the world of Linux. Fedora 37 features version 6 of the Linux kernel, as well as version 43 of the GNOME desktop environment. Also noteworthy is the fact that there's an official Raspberry Pi version now. So already, Fedora 37 sounds fairly exciting. So there's definitely a lot to get excited about here, and what I'm going to do right now is tell you all about my experience. I went ahead and wiped my ThinkPad X1 Carbon to give Fedora 37 a proper go, and I'm going to give you my thoughts in this video. My first thought, actually, is that Fedora 37 is somewhat of a boring release, but boring doesn't always mean bad. Let's take a look. Normally I like to start off my reviews by talking about the installation process. And then from there, I go right into the new and exciting features that you can look forward to. But here's the thing, there's really not all that much new to talk about when it comes to Fedora 37. Now that doesn't mean that there's no new features at all, and it also doesn't mean that the developers simply did nothing and had nothing to do. They were very busy, and as usual, they were doing a lot of work under the hood there's definitely a lot of changes when it comes to Fedora 37, but when it comes to user-facing changes, well, there's not really all that much to talk about. For an example of that, let's take a look at the installer. For the most part, there's really not all that much different at all. If you've installed Fedora in the past, the same workflow is present here. Just like before, Fedora's installation media boots into live mode, and that gives you a chance to evaluate how well Fedora supports your hardware. Then, whenever you're comfortable, you can kick off the installation process. And that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. If you've installed Fedora at any point in the recent past, then this probably looks like the exact same thing. And for the most part, it kind of is. But you know what? That's not really a problem. The installer has one job. Its job is to install Fedora on your system, and it does that. It does that very well, in fact. So in that case, regardless of whether or not there's new features, I have to call the installer a win. It has one job, and it gets that job done. But once you finish installing Fedora 37, what new features might there be that you could get excited about? Well, that's the interesting part. Fedora 37 has a handful of new features that are very welcome, but at the same time, it has no new features at all. Confused? Well, here's the thing. Fedora 37 ships with GNOME 43, which is the latest version of the popular desktop environment as of the time I'm recording this video. And this new desktop comes with new features of its own. And since Fedora is including GNOME 43 in the default spin, it automatically benefits from all of GNOME's new features. But as good as GNOME 43 happens to be, its new features are not specific to Fedora. So that's why I mentioned earlier that Fedora has no new features at all, but it also has some new features. Features that GNOME has provided as part of its new release. And you know what? GNOME 43 is a great desktop. I've reviewed it recently, so I won't spend too much time going over all of its new features here. If you want to learn more about GNOME 43, then I'll leave a card for that review right about here. But one of the most noteworthy features of GNOME 43 is the new Quick Toggles feature, which brings the system control section of the top panel into the modern age. In my opinion, it looks a lot better, especially when you see it side by side compared to the previous release of Fedora. But you know what? The entire desktop experience in Fedora 37 is awesome. And that's not a surprise. Fedora is one of, if not the best distributions out there for fans of the GNOME desktop. And it implements GNOME so well that it literally feels like a first-class citizen because, well, it is. It's fast, responsive, and especially awesome for those of you that want to experience GNOME as the developers intended, rather than having a bunch of extensions included by default that end up changing GNOME into something else entirely. And if you've been following Linux desktops, that's a very common thing. So if you're not a fan of customized GNOME experiences and you want something that's more vanilla, then Fedora is a great fit. And it's been a great fit for that use case for quite some time now. 
and I really do like the vanilla gnome experience a lot, so I really enjoyed that aspect of Fedora quite a bit. So far, I've had nothing but really great things to say about Fedora 37, and rightfully so, the desktop experience is fantastic. However, everything I've mentioned so far is specific to the x86 version of Fedora 37 that you can install on your laptop or desktop. But when I venture outside of x86, I encountered something that unfortunately makes it impossible for me to call this release perfect. The Raspberry Pi version seems to be completely broken. For those of you that aren't already aware, Fedora 37 advertises that it has official support for the Raspberry Pi. That certainly sounds like something to get excited about, but in my test, the Raspberry Pi version doesn't work. Like, at all. To set up my Pi with Fedora 37, what I did was I decided to use the built-in image writer that Fedora ships. My line of thinking was that I thought it would be a very good idea to use Fedora's tools to write the distribution to an SD card rather than flash it manually like I normally do. And while I thought that logic was sound, the resulting SD card wouldn't boot on a Raspberry Pi at all. And here's the error that I saw right here after I wrote the image to the SD card. Now at first I thought that maybe it might be a fluke. So I re-downloaded it yet again, and reflashed it, and the same thing happened, it wouldn't boot. Now to attempt to work around this problem, what I decided to do was try the manual method that I normally use when it comes to deploying distributions on the Raspberry Pi. So I downloaded the image, I extracted it, and then using DD, I wrote it directly to the SD card. And you know what? That actually fixed the unbootable Pi problem that the official image writer seems to be causing and I was actually able to get around that problem. At that point, I thought I was all set. The Pi version of Fedora 37 was booting, and it looked very promising. But then I ended up running into another problem. The GNOME desktop wouldn't start. I'd see the desktop wallpaper, and then a handful of seconds later, the screen would go completely blank, and then after a few more seconds, the screen would reappear, just to go blank again. It would reappear, go blank again, and just repeat over and over and over again. It looked like a session was trying to start, and then it ended up failing just to retry again, and it seemed like an infinite loop of trying to load the desktop. And honestly, I have no idea what to make of this. What I'm going to do is continue to test the Pi version of Fedora 37. Maybe I'll figure out what the problem is, and if I do, maybe I'll come back and do a video about it. But as of the time I'm recording this video, I was not able to get it to work. Now, I always have to keep in mind when I test distributions that hardware failure is always possible. So to rule out any potential hardware failures, what I did was I downloaded another distribution and attempted to boot that on the same Raspberry Pi with the same SD card. Specifically, I tried Ubuntu 2210, and it worked on the first try, no problem at all. I used the same DD command to flash the image, and then I inserted it into the Raspberry Pi, powered it on, and from there, it was totally fine. No problem at all. Going back to Fedora, it failed. Again. So, unfortunately, I can't really see this as a hardware problem, but actually a software problem. It just doesn't look like the Raspberry Pi version was QA'd at all. And that's very unfortunate, especially when you consider the quality of Fedora on x86. It's awesome. The Raspberry Pi version is the complete opposite. It just fails. I mean, it's just totally weird that the release notes mention that Raspberry Pi support is officially here just for it not to work at all. But it is what it is. Now, I hope to revisit the Raspberry Pi version of Fedora 37 at some point in the near future. For now, I'm just going to assume that the developers will get this problem fixed, and if they do, maybe I'll come back with an updated video. But for right now, unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi version of Fedora 37 is a total failure. However, when you ignore the failure around the Raspberry Pi version and you just focus on the x86 version of Fedora 37, it's awesome. I have nothing negative to say whatsoever about Fedora 37 on x86. And the quality of Fedora if you were to install it on an x86 laptop or desktop is hard to ignore. As I mentioned before, it's fast and it's stable. You get the latest GNOME experience, you get version 6 of the Linux kernel, and Wayland continues to be the default, which makes the desktop experience smoother than ever before. And you know what? Fedora 37 on the desktop is awesome. In fact, I was even able to update the firmware on my laptop with Fedora 37, which worked without any issues at all. So if you want to try Fedora 37 on an x86 PC, then I see no reason not to give it a glowing recommendation. As for the Pi version, maybe we just need to give it a bit more time to mature and become usable. So, Raspberry Pi issues aside, Fedora 37 is awesome. 
I see no reason not to recommend it on your x86-based laptop or desktop. It's a fantastic release. I just love the attention to detail in the GNOME integration. It's just fantastic. Probably the best GNOME integration of any distribution in existence today. And even though there's not much in the way of new features that are specific to Fedora, it's a great experience and I think you should check it out. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this video, this review in the comments down below. Also, be sure to click the like button if you like this video. That helps YouTube understand that we need more Fedora and actually more Linux in general on YouTube. That would be awesome. Anyway, I'm going to get back to editing some additional content for you guys that I can't wait for you to see. So definitely subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you again very soon.